Now let's talk about treating type 2 diabetes. But first, let's remember, type 2 diabetes is an elevation in blood sugar. So all of the treatments are going to be aimed at reducing blood sugar. There are many different approaches to lowering blood sugar via the standard of care. One of them is to give people more insulin, either having them inject insulin or take medication that causes their body to kick out even more. But let's remember, elevated insulin levels were the initial problem. So although this may, in the short term, lower blood sugar, in the long term, what this solution does is speed up that vicious cycle and make the problem worse. Now, there are other medications that can cause blood sugar to get lower without increasing insulin, but many of you probably already know one of the biggest drawbacks with this solution is cost. This is the one that's going to cost at the pharmacy. And it can cause a big problem as we continue to make this disease worse. And then how about this one? How many of you have heard this before? Eat less and exercise more, right? How many? Everyone. How about instead of just being lectured on eating less, we remember the root problem behind type 2 diabetes, which is elevated blood sugars. And what if we just change what we're eating? Let's directly lower blood sugar by remembering what happens to blood sugar when we eat. When we consume carbohydrates, our blood sugar goes up. This is what we've been told to eat for so many decades. A high carbohydrate and a low fat diet, which makes no sense for a disease where the problem is elevated blood sugar. Let's take a look at a different way of approaching this. A low carbohydrate and a high fat intake. A high fat intake, why? because the reaction to blood sugar with fat consumption is flat. It makes sense. This is why fat needs to be a very important part of a science-based nutrition recommendation to treat this disease. Now, many people may wonder, well, if I'm not consuming those carbohydrates, am I gonna be tired? And the answer is no, not if you eat enough fat. Fat is a wonderful fuel source. And when we restrict carbohydrates and increase the fat in our diet, we will change our energy source from carbohydrates to fats. And fat is a much more consistent energy source. So in someone who has restricted carbohydrates, they're getting energy from two fat sources. The fat that they're consuming in their foods, but now they also get to use for energy the fat that they already have stored. These two fat sources in the liver make ketone bodies, which our body can use to fuel some really important parts of us, including our brain, our heart, and our skeletal muscle. So our energy stays up, but we're getting energy from fat sources. So what happens to your body when you effectively restrict carbohydrates? Well, remember, if we restrict carbohydrates and we're now using fat for energy, we're going to produce ketone bodies. So one of the things that we will see is our ketone levels will rise. And because we've restricted carbohydrates, restricted what is causing our blood sugar to rise, we will see the blood sugar drop. And this generally leads to weight loss, significant weight loss for most people. Why and how can that be if we're consuming much more fat? And the answer to that is, remember, fat does not cause an insulin response. And insulin is our fat storage hormone. So if we're driving down our fat storage hormone by changing what we're eating, it effectively unlocks our fat. 
and people are able to lose weight. And that helps with type 2 diabetes as well. Instead of our standard of care approaches, which generally lead to frustration for patients, if we can change our approach and change what we're eating, science-based changes of what we're eating, we can gain control of type 2 diabetes. We can gain control of this epidemic. What does this mean for the treatment of type 2 diabetes? Well, let's remember that vicious cycle. When people are eating carbohydrates over tolerance, they need more insulin, their body releases more insulin, they become less sensitive to insulin, and around and around we go. And this is what leads to frustration. People are frustrated when they get stuck in this cycle. But guess what? You can reverse the cycle. By eating carbohydrates under your tolerance, then you need less insulin. Your body releases less insulin and you become more sensitive to insulin. So we are effectively getting at the cause of this problem.